so the goal for today is is to have um, to set up the simulator, even though yeah probably uh, some of you already know how to do that, and then plug it some reinforcement learning and then start doing some reinforcement learning training. Um, so this is the first session. In another uh, series, I would like to dig more into um, how to make the process faster, how to make it smoother, and how to make it uh, work better. The first thing first, uh, of course, if you want to use the Don Donkey Car Simulator, uh, you can look for Donkey Car Gym and go on uh, Ton, Cra uh, Ton Kramer repo. And if you go in the releases, there's different binaries. So I will be mainly using Linux, of course, because that's the easiest. And all you need to do then is go to the assets, download the binary. When you open the simulator, so you have the simulator, you have the different ports, one port for communicating uh, with the simulator, one port for private API and then some time scale, for instance, for running the simulator faster, and then you can activate different options. The donkey car simulator, it's mainly that. Uh, you have a car, you have um, a camera on the car. You can drive it by changing the steering and the throttle. And you may have additional sensors like LiDAR. So download this Git repository, which will be, in fact, um, it's the interface to interact with the simulator. And in donkey, which go just gonna clone uh, this this repo. In the environment, uh, that's where you will define the reward function. What do we give to your to our agent, and uh, also the termination condition. And to install it, we can just do a pip install minus e dot. So minus e is interactive because we are going to modify the source code, and we still want the package to be uh, installed. So here we have Jim Donkey Car. At the init here, there are different environments that are already predefined, which corresponds to uh, the different track. Uh, so first thing that you need to do is actually launch the simulator. Then the simplest way to uh, create, to connect to the simulator is just, just to do a jim.make, then the ID of the environment. And here we go. We have, so we have a Donkey Car connected to the environment. And what we can do is we can just reset our car and get uh, just see what um, our car is seeing. So this is what you get from the camera. It is a bit distorted. When we step uh, in the simulation, what we will get, we will get a new observation. We will get some reward. We will get a termination. Uh, and then we will get additional information. And so we're just going to call step. And step takes two arguments. One argument will be uh, the steering and the other one will be the throttle. So if we if we step with zero zero, it will just do nothing. So to make it move, uh, let's put the throttle to one, and here we go. And here it starts. And if we want to stop it, then we can just put the throttle to uh, to zero again. Take a look at uh, what is currently in the environment, and then we're going to uh, plug that um, environment with some reinforcement learning agent. And, and do some training. So I'm inside that repo, and if I go in environment, donkey, and I will open donkey env and donkey sim. The main component, in fact, of an environment, and that's what we're going to see, is um, is the observation space. So what do you receive as as input? Here it's the camera for now, and the action space with its steering and throttle. We can configure uh, the maximum cross track error. So above that threshold. Your car will, uh, the, the episode, the trial will terminate and your car will uh, reset. Um, frame skip is a parameter telling you how often do you, um, how many times you will repeat the same action sent to the server. This can be useful if the frequency, control frequency is too high, then the learning will take too much time. If you let it like that, the, the car will wiggle around a lot because it, this space is in fact quite big and you don't need that to achieve good uh, time on most tracks. So we're going just to half everything. So instead of having uh, the full uh, steering possibility, we're going to just uh, use half the space and this will make the learning uh, much faster in fact and smoother. So the observation space is uh, is just the pixels. So here we have, we get the sensor size, which is in fact the resolution of the camera. 
so RGB image. And we say that we have values between 0 and 255. Here it's what's happening in the step, so it's mostly just communicating with uh, the simulator and, and then uh, getting a new, a new image and then sending the result to, uh, to the agent. If you go to cut rewards, so this is how it is currently uh, defined, the current task. So if it is terminated, it will get a punishment. If you um, are above the maximum cross-track error, it will also be punished. And if you hit something, it will also uh, be punished. And then in case none of the termination condition here are um, effective, uh, the agent is rewarded to be close to the center of the track while uh, working at full speed. So the current uh, main two are if we hit something or if we are above um, maximum track error. We're going to uh, use uh, Stable Baseline 3, which is the library I'm actually developing. So Stable Baseline 3 is a set of reliable reinforcement learning implementations with a, a nice interface, so you can take a look at the documentation, but basically all you need to do is import the algorithm, instantiate your environment, and then you can directly uh, play with it. So again, we're going to import Jim. We're going to import Jim Donkey Car. And we're going to import, so um, here just to make it fast and and not blow up also my, my RAM, I'm, I'm going to import a PPU. We can again um, instantiate the environment doing gym.make and then the name of the environment. Here it's a donkey mountain track version 0. And here we will have our agent, uh, our robot, which is now in the simulator. Next things we need to do is actually um, set up our agent and here we can just set up uh, a CNN policy so a convolutional neural network policy just use the untrained agent and 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 see what it is doing normally it won't do something um, not nothing really satisfying but it's just to show how, how it works so well, what we're going to get is use the model.predict to actually select an action from uh, the observation we get from the environment. And we used to, we are going to use also the deterministic flag because at the end when you want to uh, deterministic to use your robot, uh, you want to have a deterministic controller. You don't want a, a controller that is exploring. Um, okay, and next step is just to uh, to step into the environment and retrieve the different info. So just tap and we step using the action from, from the reinforcement learning agent. And if the episode is over, then we can just uh, reset our environment. So here's just to demonstrate how it will work, uh, how the um, interface work with the agent. And it's an untrained agent, so it's, it's going to do random things and it, it will crash pretty early. The other thing is, Running something in the terminal is nice, but if we want to save checkpoint, if we want to save a lot of things um, to save the best model, to save the hyperparameter we use to actually do the training, it's not very convenient. So uh, the good news for you is again, Stable Baseline got you covered. It's called the RL Baseline Zoo. You can also search for it for RL Zoo on uh, on Google. Uh, and the zoo is is basically uh, the training framework for um, for stable baseline three. It includes many things. Um, so it, inc it includes a train script. It includes script for uh, plotting the learning curves, and we're going to explore that also in the future. Uh, it includes script for uh, hyperparameter tuning, automatic hyperparameter tuning, uh, and other things. Um, like uh, callbacks or um, wrappers. Uh, that's it. And and the nice thing is is once you you have done that, you can directly take a look at the hyperparameters that you have used for one algorithm, and and change them here. And then it will save automatically all the information to reproduce uh, the training. And in if you go to utils import env, this is where you can import custom environment. 
And in fact, donkey car is already included in it because I've been working with it. Uh, so you don't need to modify it, but for instance, if you're using another name, another package name, you can include your custom uh, gym environment in there. Next is we go to hyperparameter. And again, if you go to TQC, which is the off policy algorithm we are already using. Next things is what do we have in there? So in there, we have many things. Um, we can define all the wrappers we want around our environment. And here, um, actually, I'm using a, I was using a different version of the env environment where I already pre-processed the image and output a vector uh, using an autoencoder, and we can, we could actually set up that. And then um, we have other wrapper like a maximum number of time steps per um, per trial, and um, the horizon wrapper. So this one is very also uh, important. So if you want to um, your robot to be to have smooth action, and you want to penalize, for instance, uh, jittery action, and um, you need to actually give the agent the previous time step and the previous action that was taken. Otherwise, you are breaking the mark of assumption, and it won't work. So when you want to penalize uh, continuity, uh, so do a continuity cost, um, then this this wrapper is, is super important. So it it will give an history. Uh, of the observation and action to the agent. Uh, so here, we, this we can remove. We don't need that. So we define the callback to uh, do parallel training, and we do we will do the training, uh, start a new thread every 200 time step, and then it will be synchronized. Um, then we define the maximum training budget, what type of policy is needed, and um, and different arguments like the uh, the size, uh, how many hidden layers do we have in our policy, how many critics do we have, um, when do we start, and things. Um, so here we we're just going to do a, a quick trial. So I'm going to comment out most of it. Uh, here it's also for normalizing uh, the observation and and and, um, and the reward. What we can do directly is call the train function. So Python train, then we choose the algorithm. So the algorithm here is TQC. The environment, the environment is donkey mountain track version zero. Um, there's a special argument for a parallel uh, evaluation and we're not going to use it. Otherwise it will spawn another car. So we're going to set it to minus one. And we can do things like uh, save um, uh, one model every, save checkpoints every um, uh, 20,000 uh, time steps. And this is how we save it. And um, do we have something else? And for instance, if we want to modify hyperparameter on the fly, I could directly change the learning rate here by passing it uh, here as params. So here we're going, just going to launch some training, saving a checkpoint every 10,000 time step uh, using a CNN and a very small uh, buffer size. So um, if you want to provide the name of the car, I'm going to just, I'm not going to launch a command, but so it would be a Python train dot py and then, and then you pass the environment uh, key keyword argument. Then you, you have the name of the keyword argument you want to, to change or to pass. Um, and then you need to use two quotes. Um, so double quotes and single quotes because it needs some escaping. And here you, you, you can put uh, a new name. Okay. I think here it didn't detect any contact. So um, what we're going to do is also uh, add a new termination condition. Here, we go to the Unity Sim Handler. So what, what we want to do is we have different things we want to do. Uh, we want to, uh, to count how many steps uh, we were be below a certain speed. And if we are below that certain speed for too long, then we're going to reset uh, the environment. So we're going to define end step uh, low speed 
here um, and we are going to also set up um, a minimum st a startup step because at the very beginning of the episodes anyway the agent will be uh, slow so we need to also um, allow um, the agent to um, to be slow at the very beginning uh, but that's that's all so the first thing so uh, and and then we also need to specify a minimum speed uh, below which we consider the, the agent to be stuck and here um, I just set an arbitrary, arbitrary va value of 1 but we can change that uh, later um, okay so once we have done that if we need to also reset this number at every uh, call to reset so we need to go to reset and here we will set up that speed Next is where do we um, change the termination condition? It's I think it's it's called the determine episode over. Uh, determines episode over. So here we're going to just add a new condition, uh, which is if um, then if the absolute value of the speed is below um, a certain value, which is our mean speed. Then we're going to increment uh, our counter of low speed, and if that counter is above a certain threshold, I don't know. Uh, during three seconds, we, if we are stuck, so three seconds is a sixty time step. Then we are also going to say that the the episode is over. True. Um, that's it. Um, and as I told you, we also need to set up another thing that the actual number of steps in the current episode are above a certain threshold. Um, and here we're going to wait, I don't know, for f three, four seconds, uh, five seconds before actually um, considering um, the agent to be too slow. And if it's not the case, then we're just going to um, to uh, ta -ta -tum. if it's not the case, then we're just going to reset our our counter. So the last thing we need to do is um, actually so increment that counter of how many time step are we doing in our episode? Again, we need to define it in the init and in the reset. So in the reset, here we're going to reset it to zero, so number of time step in one episode. In the constructor to zero, and then it's called take action, if I recall. And here we're going, just going to increment the number of steps taken uh, inside the environment. Just to recap, what we have done, we just added a new condition for termination, which is if the absolute speed is below a um, minimum speed, and we are after the start, so after um, allowing the car to actually speed up, um, then we're going to um, uh, to check uh, how long have, have we been too, too, too slow, and if we are too slow too long, then we are going to set the episode over. Uh, what kind of action noise do you use here? Yeah, good question. So there's different way of doing action noise. Currently, by default, it's a Gaussian action noise, but I would not recommend using that. And in fact, if you take a look at the hyperparameter, I'm using called something called um, SDE for um, so state dependent exploration. It's something I've been working on, which is smoother exploration. Um, and uh, you can learn more if you search for GSDE, I think at call. It's called Smooth Exploration for Robotic Reinforcement Learning. It is included, in fact, also in Stable Base Entry, and uh, this is much smoother for, um, yeah, for actually training it in, in, on for real robots. And here in the simulator, it, it will also allow you to, to learn a, a smoother policy faster. If you want to train um, a good racing agent, you need to actually reduce the observation space because learning from 
Uh, image directly is really costly and will take a lot of time. So we're going to use uh, autoencoder. In fact, um, denoising autoencoder, also called augmented autoencoder. And the idea, so the idea of autoencoder is you just have the image as input. You encode it in a small uh, latent space, it's called, to have a latent vector, latent representation of that image. And then using that bottleneck, that small latent vector, you try to reconstruct the input image. Uh, to make it more robust, to Ill illumination change, or in our case, when we drive with uh, one or more cars, we're going to do some augmentation. And instead of reconstructed the augmented image, the input image, we are going to reconstruct uh, the untouched image. Um, and today, so today the idea is to see how do we collect data for this autoencoder? How do we train the autoencoder? How do we test it? And then how do we plug everything so we can actually train a reinforcement learning agent with it? We can clone it. There's one main folder, which is a package which contains uh, the definition of the autoencoder, uh, the data loader, which also has all uh, the augmentation included. Most of the image is, well, part of the image is not relevant. We're going to crop it. And that's what the uh, region of interest is doing. We are going to crop uh, a bit the top and so resize it. And, and then input dim will actually be um, the dimension of the image that we feed to the autoencoder. We need to also go into it and install the dependencies using pip install minus r uh, minus e dot. We create our environment and we will step uh, through it for um, an, a total number of steps that we defined before. And uh, here, the agent, it's, it's us. So we are going to um, control the car. And uh, while we control the car, so here we, we send the action to uh, the environment, which is the steering and the throttle. While controlling the car, we retrieve the observation. And here we are going actually to write uh, each image received by the camera to, to a folder. And here the nice thing about the autoencoder is you don't need to be a good driver. You just need to drive randomly in uh, the environment so you get a really diverse, uh, diverse data. And the syntax so for recording data is you have an argument folder which is uh, where we're going to re uh, record our images. We're going to call that dataset mountain because we are going to write on uh, the mountain track. And uh, then we have also a maximum number of steps, but we can exit early, so I will put to 10,000. And we can actually quit uh, the script easily uh, by pressing Q or escape. We just launch it. It will launch a small window, and as soon as a control ready is appeared, then you can control the car. Here I'm just driving as randomly as possible to actually collect uh, really a diverse data set. And so once we have collected the data, the next step will be to actually start training the autoencoder and we will see uh, the representation evolving through the training. The autoencoder is just a simple, um, it's just one, two, three, four, four layer of convolution, uh, followed by a linear uh, layer which will actually reduce the dimension of the last convolution to something that we want. And the latent, uh, so that Z size is the um, size of the latent space. It's the encoding that you will use, in fact, afterward with the RL agent. And the decoder is basically the symmetric of uh, the encoder. We load both the augmented image, which is the observation, and target ops, which is the unaugmented image, the clean image. Um, and what we do, is we do a full forward pass through the autoencoder. So uh, we encode the observation, the augmented observation, we decode it, and then we just do um, L2 uh, loss, so a squared, a mean squared error um, from pixel to pixel between the target observation and the predicted observation, the reconstructed observation. And at every epoch, uh, we'll actually randomly sample one image and take a look at what is learned. In the readme, if, if, you, uh, if you want, there's the instruction for recording data and instruction for uh, training the autoencoder. And we're just going to copy paste uh, the instruction and adapt it to our case.
we're going to train the autoencoder for um, 100 epoch with a small uh, mini batch size. The latent space will be of 32 dimension. The dataset we're going to use is dataset mountain. Best is to actually have a GPU. And here uh, you can actually see um, so what I said. So the original is the raw camera image. Cropped is one we have cropped the region of interest. And reconstruction is a reconstructed image um, by our autoencoder. And currently you see it's not it's not good at all. It's just uh, reconstructing very blurry images. So one way to actually see what's happening on what's reconstructed and and what this augmentation code does is again you can go to the readme and take a look at um, inspect the train autoencoder. Again we're going to copy paste that. Uh, and here you can already see we can f see the, a bit the lines. It's not perfect at all, but it's it's already something. So we are going to our folder. And uh, so here we want to take a look at the dataset mountain and the autoencoder is already saved here. We're going to take a look at 50 samples and we want uh, also to take them uh, with augmentation on. That's what the augment is doing. So again, we have the original image which to which we apply some augmentation. Here, it's, that's what I, I was talking about, the, those blocks are actually, uh, it's the cutout augmentation. Using any key, you can actually go through different images. So for instance, here it's uh, when we augmented the image with a random shadow, and here it's the reconstructed image. And that way we can see how robust is our autoencoder. And currently it's not so great, but it's much better than at least at the, at the very beginning. A wrapper is just something that will be applied to uh, the environment and that will modify either the action and or uh, the, the observation. To create the uh, wrapper uh, is to uh, import Jim, import from the package autoencoder, which is this package, uh, the load autoencoder function. And here I added also some type hints. So the first thing we need to do to define uh, the wrapper is actually um, make it inherit. So we will call it autoencoder. Uh, wrapper and we will inherit from Jim wrapper. So the main thing of Jim wrapper is that it receives an environment, so which is a type Jim env um, as input. And for us, we would like also to give a pass to an autoencoder. Um, and to make things easier, I will also allow it to be um, an environment viable. So in case we don't overwrite it, let's say uh, that we will call it autoencoder pass. And this will be an, an environment variable that we can set in the terminal directly. We call the constructor and passing the env. We're going to say save.autoencoder is load autoencoder off and we give the pass to the autoencoder. Uh, the next thing we need to do also is change the observation space. So we are going still to have uh, a continuous action space. So this is why we have a box. Um, we're just going to set load to um, to infinity. This this is not required, uh, but as we don't, we are not sure of of what is uh, our lower and upper bound of the autoencoder, we can just set it to minus infinity and infinity. Uh, the type will be uh, float32. And the last thing we need to give is a shape. So the shape will be actually the, um, the, the size of the encoded image. And here we can directly retrieve it from uh, the autoencoder the loaded autoencoder. Currently what we did is we changed the observation space and instead of having an image as input, we say that we have a vector of size Z size, which is a latent vector size as input. And so we also need to, um, to change the step and the reset function. 
so we're going to first change the reset function. And the reset function will return a numpy array, which is the encoded image. So for that, we first need to uh, reset our environment using self.env.reset. Um, and next things we need to do is uh, encoded image. We're going to encode it using the autoencoder. So for that, we call the encode from raw image. And here, there's actually uh, a trick because this uh, will give you um, RGB image, but because we are using OpenCV to load everything, uh, our autoencoder is, uh, is using BGR images. So we just need to flip the last channel to actually have the correct order of channels. So instead of RGB, we have BGR. And once we have done that, uh, we can just re return the encoded image. And we, we add a comment, convert to uh, BGR. So that's for the reset and for the uh, step, which take as parameter in action, which is uh, the throttle and um, uh, the throttle and the steering. And we will return, so we will return an observation to so an MP array. Uh, we will return the reward, we will return the termination condition, and we will return also the information uh, dictionary. So again, here we need just to step in the environment, have an empty of step, passing the action that we have, and we retrieve so the observation, the reward, if it's terminated, and some information. Again, uh, we encode uh, with a pre-trained autoencoder. And we can just copy paste here. And what we do is so we return everything except the observation because we return just the encoded observation. As a debugging step, we could even here um, and we are going to do that. We're going to reconstruct um, to to plot the reconstructed image. So for that, in the autoencoder, um, we have a decode. Uh, yeah, we have a decode uh, function, and we can directly pass normally the encoded image. Here, decode encoded image we can again plot the original which is the observation here don't forget to actually convert it to bgr otherwise you will have weird things so we import opencv here we go reconstructed image we will have um we will we will show the image and reconstruct the image Import uh, Jim Donkey Car. Import Jim. Uh, we have our package which is called autoencoder. So we, it's called a, um, autoencoder. We retrieve the pass to the autoencoder. And so the pass is this absolute pass plus uh, the pass to the log. Here we go. And then uh, we can do a gym.make to create the environment and connect to the simulator. We can then set the environment variable using the pass we just uh, add, we just defined before. So the pass is there and normally we can import now. Yes. Now we're going to wrap our environment. And for that, we're just going to uh, call the autoencoder wrapper around the environment. Now we can reset it. And normally the observation will be then the, um, will be of shape 32. Observation, the shape is, uh, well, it's 132. We can actually, we should actually fix that. So we go to wrapper. And in encoded image, we need to flatten everything because we define 
um, it as a 1D vector, so just of size 32, and here we add uh, 1, 32 as a shape. And then we can just step uh, in the wrap environment, and normally it will show us the reconstructed image. And here we're just going to pass uh, 0 throttle and 0 speed. And so far it looks pretty pretty good. So it's the original image and the reconstruction is fine. So it means that uh, the pre-processing here is actually um, working well. I would like to include uh, the speed also um, to give this, the actual speed of the agent to the agent. And for that, we're going to add just one dimension to our vector. And um, here we're going to uh, the new observation will be uh, concatenation concatenate of two things of the encoded image and of uh, zero zero which is the the speed at, at the very beginning and the same goes here here we are actually retrieved the speed of the car from uh, the info dictionary here in the info dict, we look at the key speed and we will contact concatenate it with the encoded image and uh, return everything. I think we need to flatten that one here and flatten it here too. The last part of the video will be of the live will be actually about plugging uh, plugging it with the RL training and starting training. So for the last part, uh, we're going to use uh, the RL Zoom, which is a training framework for uh, reinforcement learning agent. So the way it is structured is for each algorithm, there's one file, one configuration file for hyperparameters. So here I had it already one wrapper which add the time limit, so it has a timeout. It's uh, usually helpful if one uh, agent is stuck and your termination condition did, did, does not detect it. We would like also to add something else, which is our wrapper. And here, so we can directly uh, call it, so it's called from the package autoencoder, from the file wrapper. Um, here we go, and it's called autoencoder wrapper. And we could, um, uh, I will not do it because we already have uh, environment variables for that. We could uh, actually uh, also set our code uh, the pass to our autoencoder. We're going to wrap it with a te termination condition with the autoencoder, which also gives you the speed. And uh, we will normalize the input uh, because the autoencoder output is not normalized and it's always a good um, it's always a good practice to have normalized observation. We are in our RLZU rep um, repository and we need to call so Python train the algorithm which is uh, called TQC for truncated quantile critics. The environment is a donkey mountain track. Uh, we are not going to create any evaluation environment, otherwise it will create two cars on the uh, on the track. And we can say um, that we want to save a checkpoint every uh, 25,000 steps. Um, and I think we are good to go. Uh, is there something else? Mm, we could also save uh, the replay buffer in case we want to continue training later on. And normally, so if I launch that, normally this will fail. Um, if I did not define, let, let me just do something. Let me define the autoencoder path. So I define it with export uh, variable. And normally this should uh, start training. Uh, and here we can just uh, keep a look at the training and there will be normally here I did not add all the bells and whistles for good RL training so it will train an agent that would work and would work quite quickly normally like in 20 in 10 20 minutes you will have something that does the full track so today 
Um, we started uh, with a recap of what was done last time and what was done last time is already saved and online on GitHub. Then we took a look at the autoencoder, augmented autoencoder, denoising one, how to collect data for it using random, um, random driving. Uh, we trained the autoencoder, we tested what was learned and by taking a look at it, we decided to continue training. And finally, we wrote a small wrapper to actually um, use it with our gym environment and plug it in in the info in the zoo. I will show you also the, the details, the small details for the secret sauce for having a fast racer and also learning to race in just hours and not days. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is do a recap of what has been done so far. And uh, in case you didn't see the first parts, you can always go to my uh, YouTube channel. There will be the replay of the different live in there. Um, and all the code and models uh, will be open source also. So if you were not there last time, you can just go to um, my GitHub, search for Jim Donkey Car 1, and in uh, releases, you will have. Uh, no, not the one. In in this repo, you search for uh, autoencoder, so for donkey car, and in releases, here you will have the models and other links uh, useful for, for today. You will have three uh, repositories. One is the augmented autoencoder repo, and the branch is uh, fit live twitch 2. For uh, everyone to have the same autoencoder, I also uploaded the model here, I uploaded the data set that was used to train it. And it was used for a 400 epoch with, I think, a batch size of 8 and the default hyperparameters otherwise. The next repo that we have in it is the Jim Donkey Car, which is the uh, the, the code doing uh, the, the glue code between the simulator and the RL agent. Fit Twitch 3, like it's the part 3 of Twitch. Uh, what is changed is we have more config a variable that we can change, notably the steering limit and the min and max throttle. And the other important thing with it is adjust a bit the reward function. The RL baseline zoo, and we are on the branch prepare Twitch Live 3. What we are going to mainly use today is in fact the RL zoo, and we will see how um, what hyperparameter we can change, how we can run an experiment. If you go to um, hyperparameter TQC, the YAML. For each uh, environment, we will have a set of uh, non-default hyperparameter that we want to change, and we can directly specify it there. We can also specify callbacks. So callbacks are, are quite useful for if you want to log additional data, and that's why we're going to see also today how to log the lap time with a callback. We can also have callback, and this is also a very useful one to do parallel training at the same time that it's collecting data. The, tra the model is also training in a separate thread and that allows to also save quite some, uh, some time. So you don't need to wait for the model to train. It's directly training in a separate thread. We also activated normalization because the uh, output of the autoencoder is not necessarily normalized. And if you want to make the training faster, you should definitely normalize. The wrapper will allow you the ear. The autoencoder wrapper is from the package I just showed so, uh, just before. Uh, will be the one responsible for encoding the image into a small vector. So it's basically a timeout. And this is useful for training, but for testing, we will actually remove it manually um, because uh, when we want to race, we don't want the model to stop that for a, a certain time step. Uh, and then there's the number, the budget. So how long do you want to train your agent? And different hyperparameter specific. Mainly here you have the uh, network, policy network size. You have uh, the learning rate, the buffer size. So the how many transition do you keep? Are you, how many steps do you keep in memory for, for training? And it will be a rolling buffer. Uh, gamma is a discounted uh, factor. So it tells you should you privilege the short-term reward or the long-term reward. And here, the first thing is I'm going to export uh, the pass to uh, where is the, um, to, to the autoencoder. And next things we need to do is called so Python train, then the algorithm we are using, which is here TQC for truncated quantile critics, the environment, which is the same uh, ID as here. 
to Donkey Mountain Track vs Jira. We're going to say we don't want to evaluate uh, because we don't have a separate evaluation environment. So weight and biases is directly integrated. You need to provide the project name and here it will be uh, donkey uh, live for the live demo. You need to specify that you want to track it. Uh, in addition to that, it's also a good, uh, good practice to here say we want to uh, save checkpoints, let's say every 25,000 steps. Uh, here, if we click on the URL, and I will make this project in fact public, so you can also access it. So I changed the x-axis not to step, but to global step, which is the number of interactions with the environment. So here uh, we have the uh, min episode reward. Uh, no, min episode reward is here. You have the min length. So the idea is here, we want our agent to not fail, uh, to, to stay on the track and not bump into any anything and that's what the mean length of the episode will tell uh, us about it the fps is just the um, how fast are we with uh, with the environment and the tra in train you will have different uh, information about training the learning rate is constant the standard deviation uh, will normally decrease over time and you have different losses uh, all the config that is saved by the zoo is also saved here in weight and bias. I also directly added uh, the lap uh, time in the callback. And in fact, that's what we are going to code right now. I just want to show how you can add additional data to your board. Go in, in the zoo, utils, callbacks, and we are going to rewrite uh, the lap time callback. So going to delete that. What we're going to write is, is a callback that every time there's a new lap, it will publish it so we can see it here. So if you want to write callback, the best thing is to look at the documentation. So you go, uh, we are using stable baseline three library. So there's a lot of documentation about what is a callback, which is basically something that is called at every step that allow you to interact with the model, with the environment, and also uh, log additional data or do additional things like uh, saving a checkpoint is is done using a, a callback or evaluating the agent is done using a callback. And here we are also most interested by the TensorBoard integration. We go to directly accessing uh, the summary writer. What we're going to, to do is add a new value to TensorBoard. So I'm just going to copy paste this uh, code. So directly accessing the summary writer and we're going to modify it to fit on it. So the name here is uh, lab time callback. What we want is a lab count to check if we need to log uh, additional things or not. This TensorBoard format uh, line is mainly to uh, retrieve uh, TensorBoard uh, writer. It's not really important how it's done. On every step, we're going to check uh, the lab count. In the locals, we have access to the info from the environment. So Jim Donkey Car in env in Donkey Sim. So info in the info. This is those two that we are interested in, which is a lab count. Lab count is this one. Lab time is uh, last lab time. And what we're going to do is if our current uh, lab count is not the same as uh, lab count and also our lab time is bigger than uh, zero. So we're going to add a scalar, which is called uh, lab. Uh, so time in the um, time slash lab time. And the value will be actually the lab time here. And in fact, most of, most of that, that code, you can find it already in the documentation of stable baseline. To use a callback, we just normally add it here. So it's directly, it's already there. It's utils.callback and then the name of it. And we could pass parameters, but here we don't have any parameters. So we just add it here. Uh, I'm going to keep it running. And then uh, now we're going to see what we can improve. I invite you to go to the study. So uh, there's many things we can change to make the training faster or better. So the first thing is called history. What we did last time was just feed the current encoded image, the current speed, and hope that the agent would learn. The problem is we didn't give the current steering position and there might be some time delay. 
So um, if, you, if you take a look, in fact, at what's in tqc.yaml, what is changed compared to the, to the default, buffer size is slightly sl uh, smaller than the default. Usually buffer size, as long as it's big enough, doesn't have much uh, importance. If it's too big, the problem is the new data will be less likely to be sampled. The main one usually to tune is the learning rate, which uh, if it's too small, it it will also learn too slowly, but if it's too high, it it won't. It will also fluctuate or even diverge. The network size also is also quite something important to tune. Usually, having something big enough. One of the main one is yeah the discount factor to choose between whether we want to privilege immediate rewards or long term rewards. Next things we can ch change also is the uh, limits of our action space. So the max tiering. So currently, I think it's between minus one and one, the shorter limits, which is currently I think between zero and one. The thing is, if we give too much freedom of, for our agent, it will also take much longer to, to learn and it will probably underperform. And that's what you can see here in the small run I did. And also by limiting the steering, max steering, you will enforce uh, more smoothness. In the config, that's all what we can change. We can change the Mac, mass cross max cross-tracked error. So, Cross track error is you, you take the center of, of the track and you see how far we are from it. And we define a max distance from, from, that, uh, from that line. The thing is, if we set it too small, then we would just learn to follow the center uh, line, which is not the optimal, of course, way of racing. If we set, set it too high, it, it will take longer to learn because it will be less penalized for being far away or being um, against the wall. I'm going to, to stop this training now because I would like to actually to start integrating the, the different tweaks. So we're just going to reuse the same uh, thing. To pass additional uh, hyperparameters, we're just going to pass to set env keyword argument. We want to pass a con different config. So in the config, it will be a dictionary. We want to change uh, the max cross track error. We want to change the steering limit. So I will show you later, but usually 0 0.5 is, is a good start. On some environment, it's not enough because the turns are sharper and you need to set it to 0 0.8 or even 1. But for the mountain track, 0 0.5 work quite well. So in practice, the, the real uh, max throttle is one. If we set it to a higher value, it will be anyway clipped by the uh, simulator. But if we set it by a higher value, it's easier for the R religion to actually sample the highest throttle and to, to be at the limit of the action space. And the throttle min, currently we cannot go backward, but we can allow to go backward a little bit. So if we go slightly faster, we can go backward. To see which one we are going to use, let's dig into the report again. So max steering, we see if we limit the action space, well, it it, it will also normally learn faster. The throttle limits, again, here, here is the default one. It's the one where we allow to uh, break more. And here it's when we give even more freedom. So to allow the agent to completely go backward, uh, it also learn uh, slower because it needs to also explore the whole space, uh, larger action space. And here there's a lot which is uh, all about the back going backward, which is not useful in our case. The other thing that you can change is the max cross track error as we see. If we set it to eight, it will learn, but it will be capped in terms of max lap time you can achieve. Here it will be around 20, but on the other side, it will be also very robust. So it will never, almost never crash. Like if you compare the lengths of the episode, this is this run. So you have an, a sweet spot because if you um, do not uh, penalize it at all, it will just go to try to go as fast as possible. It will just learn to go fast and not uh, go fast and a bit uh, near the center of the line. And it will also hinder the, the lap time. One interesting factor is the uh, gamma, so the discount factor, which is telling you, should I uh, optimize for immediate rewards or um, long-term rewards? So long-term rewards, is the one that actually gave me the best result, but it, it needs more time to train. And if you have a smaller discount factor, it will learn faster, but then it will be capped because it will just optimize the immediate rewards and the immediate rewards. It's, it's not about doing the full lap, uh, full speed. It's just about doing the small portion of, of circuit close to it, uh, full speed. 
network size. So if it's too small, it won't learn. And if it's too big, the thing, it will be too slow to learn. And because we are learning in parallel, you need to tune how often do you train. And this is, a, it's called train frequency. And how many gradient step do you take, which is the gradient step parameter. Yeah, you need to have a compromise because if it's too big, it will be too slow to train. And it won't be uh, in time of work clock time, it will be the same time for, for training. So usually having a medium sized network is, is a good compromise between the two. And go back to our uh, training. So we see that max cross track error should be in fact uh, bigger. We saw that our discount factor, so here gamma, we can set it to 0 0.99, which is the default. And we could change uh, the same way we could change other upper parameter directly in the command line. So let's just start training. Then we, we can keep talking while it's trained. Prepare the angel script here. So we go where we are. So in racing live two in the zoo, we re-export the pass to the onto encoder, otherwise it won't work. What we are going to call is the Android script. Uh, the algorithm is TQC. The environment is still the same, so it's still Donkey Car Monte Track. Um, we're going to load it from the log folder, and here what we can do uh, is load, say which experiment we want to load. Zero is the last one. If you do that, it will just load the last model and try to run it. So as we say, we want to race, so we just say race equal true as an um, environment variable. So it will disable reset. And we want to, if you want to load checkpoint, you write load checkpoint and then the name of the checkpoint, mm, 125,000. So 125,000. And this allow you in fact to check different checkpoints. So if I launch it right now, what will happen? It will launch a second car on the screen. So here you have a second car which appear and which uh, can start to also race right now. It learn, it started to learn slower, but then it will soon catch up. And with tune hyperparameters, it will, um, in one hour, it should reach uh, 20 seconds. So now we are doing laps under uh, 21 seconds consist, um, in a constant manner. Let's see, in 35 minutes, let's kill it now. So we want to race, so race equal true. Um, we're going to call the enjoy script on the kit TQC algorithm. The environment is donkey car. Uh, the log folder is log and the experiment ID is the last one. And we want to run for long enough. So we just put enough timestamp. And let's see. So I said about a bit about below 22 and a bit below 21 for the second lap. Why is the FPS less than 80? Because we have some sleep time I didn't take into account um, at reset. Oh, actually it's below 20 already. And we see that here the, the first lap is actually quite faster than, much faster than what we have in our logs because here we are not using a, a stochastic policy anymore. We are using a deterministic controller so there's no more noise added to its output. Um, but still, we will race, make the two race. The left is the oldest uh, checkpoint and the one on the right should be the newer model. And, and by, by doing so, in fact, you can uh, compare different models uh, quickly. So in fact, oh no, the model on the left is the last checkpoint and the model on the right is a previous checkpoint. So by doing so, you can compare uh, different models. And just for fun, um, let's just compare it to the one to the model I used for racing this Saturday. The model we train here on the right uh, that we trained during this live to the model that was trained uh, for the race uh, during several hours. But what's going to happen is this one is racing much much faster, and that's what we're going to see in the in the um, in the logs. So here the first lap of the first one is around twenty seconds. Here where the first uh, first lap of the other one is around 22 seconds. So it's already far away um, and, and we're probably going to fast forward everything. Yeah, so it's doing laps around 2018.5 where the other one is doing laps around 20 something. So it will be, it will probably catch up quickly. Okay, so thank you for watching. Uh, last question is now. Um, I will just finish this live with uh, with the two car uh, racing. 
and probably one of the two crashing. Everything I've shown here is open source as it's online, especially this all uh, runs, those runs and this report. So thanks for watching. Bye-bye.